These 40 lines of code over here have really improved my workflow when it comes to working with large language models. It's a simple factory pattern that lets you pick different model providers like OpenAI and Tropic or even open source ones, while also using Instructor under the hood for getting structured output. And this all from a unified interface, very simple, that you can use and extend. And in this video, I'm going to break it down. I will also share the entire code with you so you can potentially use it to improve your own generative AI apps. Now, for those of you that are new here, my name is Dave Ebelaar. I'm the founder of Data Lumina, and I've been building custom data and AI solutions solutions for the past five years and I also create videos here on YouTube like this to help you become a better AI engineer. So if that's your thing make sure to subscribe but now let's break down this class. So I always like to begin with the end in mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to just run this, show some examples and then we'll reverse engineer it. I have a simple example over here that does an LLM API call using simple messages over here. But under the hood, we use Instructor to get structured output. So we don't just get a text string back, but we actually get a Pydentic model back, similar to how you can now do that with the OpenAI structured output method in the API. But what this factory method will allow us to do is do that with all kinds of different model providers. So now we have it for OpenAI, but we can also simply swap that out with Entropic and run that all from the same interface, just changing the parameter over here. And now we have it using Entropic, but we can even use open source models that I'm currently running via Olama. So let's pick Llama over here. This will take a little longer because it's an open source model, but there we go. And we can also see that even from an open source model, completely for free, running locally, we also now get that Pydentic model back. So this is essentially what the factory pattern allows us to do with only 40 lines of code. And this will really streamline your developer experience. So now let's break down what's happening over here and also give you some context on why this is useful. So for the context of this video, it really helps if you are familiar with the instructor library, which I'm a big fan of. I also created a dedicated video on this. We use it for all, uh, all our projects currently. So if you're new to instructor, I highly recommend it, especially if you're serious about building apps with generative AI. Now, Recently, OpenAI introduced their new structured outputs in the API, which is a really big improvement that allows you to get these response models back in the form of Pydentic models. If you're unfamiliar with that, I also highly, highly recommend checking that out. But as a developer, you might not want to be limited to OpenAI and also play around with, with different models. So for example, I'm also a big fan of the Entropic models, especially Cloud Sonnet 3.5 right now. I want to streamline this developer experience within my project. So also going forward, whenever there's a new model release, I want to be able to quickly swap out that engine, if you will, and test how those new models work. And there are already a lot of frameworks that can help with this. So for example, Langchain was one of the first to come up with this unified interface to easily swap out models, but not with the instructor library. So what I really tried to create with this was that same developer experience, similar to what Lang uh, Langchain would do, but then having it really simple without much abstraction. So just a simple Python file that you can have in your own project. So first of all, you really understand what's going on without needing an external library and a dependency and not, not knowing what's going on there, but then also using a structure and also making it really easy to extend and modify it. So that was really the goal here, to create a simple class that we can put in inside new projects where we can easily check whenever we work on a new solution, is this an entropic kind of problem? Do we need open AI? Maybe do we need open source models over here? And really streamline that process. I call it an LLM factory. If you look at the official definition of the factory methods, uh, you can see that it's actually, it's a simplified version of the factory method, but it really follows the same principle. So based on the model provider that you put in, it will, it will return that uh, model provider and we can use that through a unified interface. Now, in order for you to follow along and implement this, you need two files, which I will make them available on a GitHub just for you. I will share uh, everything that you need. So you need this llmfactory.py file which is over here, but you also need this settings file. 
And this is an interesting one. This is uh, using Pydentic settings, which is something um, I'm a big fan of. I've been using it for, I think, the past months or so. Um, and I really like it to set up, a again, a central place within your project to configure settings. So this is an additional pip install, pip install Pydentic settings. And what you can see over here is, um, if you're new to it, you can look up the documentation to, to see how it works, but it's very simple. We can uh, specify any model, and this is not just to, for LLMs, but for all kinds of settings within your project. But here we use it specifically uh, to demonstrate LLM settings. So you can see for all of the model providers, OpenAI, Entropic, Llama, we can set default parameters. And this again will also help us to, at a central place, define, for example, what the default model is, what the temperature is. And again, to further streamline um, the experience within your project and also reduce really the code redundancy. So at one place, we can set the settings and later we can always override it, but we don't have to do that. And that allows us to then create chat completions with very little code. So we can just call this create completion that you saw over here in the beginning of this example. And that's all we need. And now we can just come into the settings over here. If we don't override it, we can see we have the, uh, where is it, OpenAI? We have the default model. We also have the default temperature. So that's all covered in there. And now because we have these settings in the settings file, what we can do in the initialization of this class, when we have the provider, we can get the attributes from the settings file. So the get settings we can import. It just gets all of the settings and then depending on the provider that we put in, we will have access to those settings. Then we initialize the client, again, depending on what kind of model provider we want to use. And then we patch it using Instructor. So the syntax that you see over here, so Instructor from OpenAI, etc. You can reference the Instructor documentation to figure out how this, for example, works with OpenAI, with Entropic, but you could just as well, like I've said, add Gem Gemini. Uh, you can also use light LLM here, co here. Um, so you can easily extend this or reduce this to fit your use case. So the initialization will make sure that we have the correct client ready in the class to use based on the provider that you put in. And then next to that, there's one method over here is called create completion that you can use to inference the large language model essentially make an API call. And we have the completion parameters in here, which are either loaded uh, from the settings file. So you use the default settings or you can also overwrite them. And that's all there is to this. Now, if you find this interesting, I highly recommend you check out the code and play around with it yourself to, to get a feel for it. But again, to show you now the example one more time running this, now that we have a bit more context, we can first define the, the completion model like you normally would when you work with Instructor. So again, here is the simple response and the reasoning. So we ask a question, but also the reasoning. We have the messages, and now let's switch this back to OpenAI and create the instance of the class over here. So when we run this, what it does is because the model provider is OpenAI, it will first get the settings from the get settings file. So it has the uh, base LLM provider settings, temperature, max tokens, retries, and then also the OpenAI specific settings, which is in this case, the OpenAI API key, and also the default model GPT-40. So that is what it does. It now has the settings. Then next it runs the initialized client. And here again, because the model provider is OpenAI, it will run instructor from OpenAI, it will pass in the OpenAI library, put in the API key, and now that client is ready over here. We have this instance that is ready to go. It has one method that we can use. It's called the create completion. And that is what we can use to put in the completion model and the messages. And then when we run this, it will turn the completion model like we are used to when working with Instructor. Now, and then to give you some quick context on how this can come together in a complete project, for example, I'll show you some examples over here. So currently we're in a generative AI project template that uh, we are working on inside Data Lumina to really streamline our developer experience. And I will be sharing some snippets here and there from this project on YouTube. So make sure to stay tuned for that. So um, it uses a pipeline to perform various AI uh, processing steps. And if we, for example, come over here into one of the steps where in the pipeline steps where we use AI, 
This is the generate response uh, script where we can actually, for example, process a customer care ticket and generate a response. But let's now see at what the structure looks like if we want to, if we want to make an LLM call. Now inside our project, we can simply get the LLM from the LLM factory. So this is all we need. And then we can just, again, simply create the completion over here. And now everything is taken care of. So here you can see we can override the temperature, but it knows uh, the model. It is patched with instructor. We can set even more parameters over here. The API keys are taken care of. And similar in the classify email pipeline. So that's uh, another additional step. We can follow that same pattern over here. So it really reduces the like code redundancy where you have all these parameters. And now if you, for example, want to swap out a different model, we can just plug in Entropic over here, or if we still want to use OpenAI, but a different model, we can just come in here and swap out the new default model without having to change anything within our code. So that's really the whole philosophy here. And that's why it really makes sense for us right now. And I can understand how this might be a little of an abstract video. This, I, I believe it's a pretty like advanced topic. And I believe if, if you're pretty deep into working with LLMs, if you don't already have something similar like this, you're probably like, okay, this is cool. I need something like this. At least I hope so. Um, if not, if you think this is like completely like redundant or there's a much better way to do this, also please let me know because we're literally all just figuring out how to best do this. This is really the result of the past at least like half year of experimentation with different models, different structures, different frameworks. And we like to stay very like bare bones. So don't use Langchain, for example. We really build up everything from first principles. So we have it in our own project. We understand it. We keep it as simple, as light and possible. And this is what we came to right now. So that's what I wanted to share. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments and if there are any improvements that you spot right here. All right, and that's it for this one. Now, by the way, if you're an experienced data or AI professional and you consider freelancing, but you don't really know where to start or you struggle to find clients, then you might want to check out the first link in the description. It's a video of me going over how my company can help with this. Now, in all transparency, it's a funnel designed to get leads for my company. But if you want to start your own thing, join a global network of other freelancers, you might want to check it out. All right, and then if you found this video helpful, please leave a like and also consider subscribing. And then if you wanna learn more about how we at Data Lumina use Instructor to get structured output and really improve the performance of our generative AI applications, make sure to check out this video next. It's an entire breakdown of how we currently do that and it fits right into this factory pattern that we just discussed.